Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with the daily update for February 9th, 2021. Well, today is the day that the impeachment trial begins in the U.S. Senate for Donald Trump. Uh, this is part of a, a series of events, or uh, uh, I, one might say ominous signs of turbulence to come. Uh, an environment is being created around the administration which uh, is being shaped by some of the developments I'm going to report to you. And it's a very dangerous one and must be addressed with decisive actions against this kind of polarization. Uh, let's start with the statement that was issued in an interview with uh, National Public Radio a couple of days ago by former top CIA officer Richard Grenier. Now, Grenier was the CIA station chief in Pakistan and Afghanistan in 2001, and later went on to head the CIA Counterterrorism Center from 2004 to 2006. Now, here's what he told the interviewer. We have to treat domestic extremists, uh, such as those who attacked the Capitol on January 6th, with the same counterinsurgency methods of the war on terror. He said, the problem is that extremists have, quote, tacit support, unquote, from much larger numbers, meaning what, 75 million Trump voters? And he called for Trump's conviction to send a signal to them. Now, one must ask what he means by this war on terror methods. Does he mean enhanced surveillance? Does he mean waterboarding, drone strikes? Uh, it should be noted that these methods did not defeat the terrorists. In fact, they increased the numbers of people who were recruited to join the terrorists. And it was only when the US military and the Russian military worked together in Syria and with the Iranian forces that the terrorists of the uh, Islamic Caliphate and ISIS were defeated. So this kind of comment from uh, Grenier is indicative of a attempt to provoke reactions rather than to calm the situation. Now, we also have the very dangerous statements by the head of the Strategic Command, uh, Admiral Charles Richard. <clears throat> this was in the February issue of Proceedings, which is the U.S. Naval Institute's monthly magazine. And what he said is that we have a real possibility now of nuclear war with Russia and China. Uh, he said that the possibility of war has gone from not likely to likely. And he said this is due to the aggressive policies of, of China, the military buildup of China, and he said we have to modernize the U.S. nuclear capability as a deterrent capability. Now, this is really quite astounding given that he's responsible for the nuclear deterrence to protect the United States with the strategic command that he heads. Now this coincides with the Atlantic Council document, uh, the longer telegram, which calls for, among other things, a laser-like focus on Xi Jinping to address what they say is the aggression coming from China. Uh, the title, the longer telegram, is a reference back to the long telegram issued in uh, 1946 or 47 by George Kennan which became the basis of the doctrine of containment of Russia, of the Soviet Union, which led to a Cold War that lasted for over 40 years and was enormously expensive drain on the real economy of the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, so the idea of this uh, document from the Atlantic Council, which by the way, the Atlantic Council under Frederick Kemp has been a major uh, uh, player in the anti-Trump fight in the United States. And now they're, they're publishing something which calls for aggressive action against China. At the same time, the commander of the Strategic Command is calling for the United States to have a military buildup to contain China. Now, at the same time, you have the Navalny case targeting Putin. We've covered this the last couple of days. Uh, this is escalating. The, the Russians expelled diplomats from Germany, Poland, and Sweden, who they said participated in the opposition rallies defending Navalny. 
and those three countries responded by expelling Russian diplomats. Well, this kind of tit-for-tat expulsion, the sanctions and so on, uh, merely heightens the danger of war and is, is not the way that you reach an understanding. The fact is that Navalny is funded by human rights organizations in the West. He is supported by them. The same social media networks that are suppressing uh, opposition in the United States uh, coming from conservative groups is promoting the Navalny color revolution insurgency inside Russia. Uh, and we have an, an interview on the LaRouche Organization website that I did with Alex Kreiner, uh, an author of a book that exposes Bill Browder of the Magnitsky Act as a British agent, uh, part of the color revolution opposition to Putin in Russia. Uh, and then finally, we have the expansion of censorship. You know, the efforts to contain and control not just uh, so-called hate speech, but any opposition. You mention anything about the question, questioning the vote count on November 3rd and you could be shut down, as the president has been. But this is not just targeting so-called conservatives, it's also going to target the so-called progressives who are Democrats who don't support the, re the continuation of the war policy of Obama under the Biden administration. So this also is something that's quite ominous. Now, this same kind of approach is now being applied in the impeachment case. Uh, there was a statement, a, a letter to Trump from Representative Jamie Raskin, who's the impeachment manager for the House Democrats, who will present the case today against Trump in the Senate and in, in the trial. And he said that the, in the letter that the decision by Trump and his attorneys that Trump will not testify can be cited as an inference of guilt. Now, this was responded to by constitutional expert Jonathan Turley, who said this goes against one of the sacred principles of American law, that the refusal to testify should not be used against an accused party. So here we see that uh, on top of everything else, the, 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 you know, they say that the Republican should be open to the evidence. Well, the person who's going to preside over the trial, Senator Leahy from Vermont, has already said he believes that Trump is guilty and should be convicted. So where is the pretense to a fair trial? This is merely designed to increase the polarization, which Democrats say they, they want to overcome. How do you overcome polarization? By poking a stick into the eye of your alleged opponents. Now, instead, what's needed is, is a common basis for addressing the real crises confronting mankind. And these are the escalating economic collapse, which includes a global food crisis, uh, vast increases in uh, utility and electricity prices due to the imposition of the anti-science Green New Deal, and also the pandemic, which is threatening virtually every nation on the planet. And what's needed is cooperation. It's coordinated activities, not a great reset for a banker's dictatorship or a Green New Deal, but new investments going into science, research and development that will produce the technologies that will enable man to increase productivity and to find new resources rather than going back to feudal practices of lower energy density electricity production, which means we're gonna have energy shortages worldwide. The other area that has to be addressed is the war danger. There are no essential reasons why the United States and China should be at odds. The fact that one nation is developing should be welcomed by other countries rather than being seen as a threat. So dialogue is key, and the Schiller Institute will be sponsoring a roundtable discussion this Saturday, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you can get it at the Schiller Institute Dot com. I believe also it will be on the LaRoucheOrganization.com. But we'll be taking up the whole question of how do you break from this geopolitical doctrine which defines other, and other nations as enemies as opposed to looking for common agreement to pursue the common aims of mankind.
So that's my report from today, and I'll be with you again tomorrow.